One of the hardest things that she will ever have to admit out loud after dealing with a narcissist is that they came into your life for no other reason than to ultimately take advantage of you. Bedazzling you with their wit and charm, shape-shifting into whatever fantasy land character they needed to, to come across to you as if they were some kind of a McDreamy, or like the two of you were gonna out best friend Chandler Bing and Ross Geller, conning you with this illusion of a relationship that was going to turn your life into feeling like it was the happiest place on earth. Unfortunately, there isn't anything happy or dreamy about being lied to, betrayed, manipulated, psychologically tormented and tortured into a confusional oblivion by someone so vindictive, conniving, and evil, ain't no way in hell even Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger would want to be besties with that kind of wicked disaster. And it is one hard pill to have to swallow that everything about this fairy tale from the crypt was built off of nothing but a foundation of a fraud. Just so some demonic chameleon could destroy your life and take from you everything that they could get their hands on, including your sanity and the very essence of the person that you once were. But then you get slammed with the next sucker punch to the gut. Because as undoubtedly hard as that is to accept and to admit to yourself, it's a shit ton harder to have to then gather the shattered pieces of your soul from up off of the ground and try to somehow put one foot in front of the other if you want any kind of shot at all to escape this living nightmare when you don't know up from down what's real from what's not, who the heck you even are anymore with the whirlwind of unanswered questions racing through your head like a bull in a china closet, making it impossible for any other thoughts to even get close to crossing over the threshold of your mind and the weight of the guilt, shame, embarrassment being so heavy to bear, it has damn near paralyzed you and from isolating you from the outside world. Not like you really have anywhere to go or anyone to turn to if you were to escape or even hear you if you screamed out for help, which only makes you feel more lost and alone and cranks up the speed of the whirlwind of thoughts and unanswered questions, leaving you to scream in the silence of your own hell, continuously plagued by these questions as if you had some kind of broken record in your head as to how could this happen? How could I be such a fool? What can I do to fix this? What the fuck is even going on right now? Is this even for real? Not only is this part so soul-shatteringly painful, maddening, and takes your already exhaustive state to a whole new level of exhaustion that you didn't even think could exist, but it is one of those unwanted gifts that just keeps on giving. For what feels like an eternity, your mind constantly seesawing between feeling like a fool and feeling like it was all your fault. But what ultimately will make or break this crazy making cycle they have deliberately created for you to remain spinning in is sadly where most of us go wrong majority of the time and why it is so extremely important to know because it changes everything in regard to the way that you would go about dealing with or try to make sense of and understand anything it is that they think do or say because they do not think like you and as such when you try to go about doing anything in the same manner that you typically would, not only will it not work, but it will make things significantly worse and far more of a maddening situation for yourself. Because here's the deal. You are no more of a fool than it is your fault to have been sucked in to the vortex because abuse is never your fault. Whether you are codependent, mentally impaired, sharp as a tack, or have an IQ that would make Einstein look 
like an idiot. Abuse is abuse, period nor does being codependent attract them to you or the reason why you tolerate this abuse. Because one, you don't have a neon light saying, hey, codependent over here, any more than they have a biohazard sign tattooed to their forehead warning you to run as fast as you fucking can in the opposite direction. And for two, if you were so codependent to the degree of deeming it as normal, you wouldn't have recognized that you were even being abused. To which those sadly born into narcissistic family, that may be the case for quite some time and can be harder to recognize as well as be able to accept it as not normal. But for most, even if you did have some kind of traumatic childhood, had you been in a relationship with a non-narcissistic individual, you would not have behaved in the same manner. What makes you feel codependent after this type of abuse is due to their conditioning you to put their needs first, tiptoeing around and walking on eggshells as to not upset or wake the beast within them, from brainwashing you into thinking that you can't survive without them or that no way in the world is anybody else ever going to find you worthy from gaslighting you into believing that everyone else in your life was untrustworthy, didn't like you, or was using you, all the while telling these very same people the same bunch of bullshit tales to seal the deal on this triangulation so that this tension would now not only make their victim playing more believable, but also keep you two apart so you can't figure out that the narcissist is nothing but a big old frothing crock of BS. Only to then later on flip the script to what originated as these individuals being abusive out to get you or really never liked you to you now being the one who abused them and that it was your fault that you're the asshole, you're the problem, now leaving you with all of this guilt and shame, which sends our innate drive to want to resolve conflict and make sense of things into turbo boost, trying to come up with some way to fix or save this situation. And the more effort you put in, the more the narcissist pulls away, disappears, or stows upon you one of their infamous silent treatments turning you from being in a state of mental mayhem to putting you into a one-man insane asylum. Because being ignored to this degree, point where they won't even but acknowledge your existence, is literally psychological torture. So much so that it is used during interrogations and in wars because of how extreme and intense of a fact that this has on one, which is the same exact thing that the narcissist is doing with you. You do not stay in these relationships or tolerate their abuse because you're a codependent or because you're some fool. What keeps one in these relationships for so long is because they literally are torturing you to conform. And that's not to say we all don't have our own things to work on, areas, qualities, or characteristics about ourselves that could improve, have firmer boundaries, and our own ways of creating conflict between others and within the relationships that we have with anyone. But yes. that is not what we are talking about here or even close to what these people do and the intentions behind why they do them. They do not have morals. They do not have empathy, compassion, or know the first thing about humility. Right. They do not care about your feelings, have any desire to bond, or connect or show reciprocity because everything is about them. It's, it's about what they want, what they need, what they desire in order to fulfill this delusional perception that they have of themselves and staying on top of the hierarchical ladder over yonder in fantasy land, no matter what it takes to get there or who they hurt along the way, be it their children, their spouse, or the milkman. It makes no difference 
whatsoever because they do not view others as having any kind of intrinsic value and why taking pity or showing them compassion due to the fact that they have a disorder doesn't work because this disorder is unlike that of any other mental illness or disorders outside of psychopaths and sociopaths. Because the person affected and the life that is burdened is not them, but the ones that they abuse. No amount of compassion in the world is going to benefit them or have any effect on the prognosis, outcome, or their behaviors and only ends up undermining the severity of the effect that this abuse has on the ones at the receiving end of their abuse. But because we think so differently and because we try to go about understanding things about their behaviors, their actions, and their words, applying our take to them, and it simply will not work ever with anything and why truly going no contact is the best advice that anyone could ever give you about how to deal with a narcissist. Hands down, because it is literally something that you have to remind yourself to not think in the same mental toolbox that you usually do. Not just sometimes, but constantly with every single interaction, every single conversation, every single time you go to try to make sense or understand anything that they do, which not only isn't easy, but it is almost impossible. And most can't, not all the time, because it challenges and goes against everything we have ever known. It goes against our values, our morals, and our innate human tendencies on top of these relationships being interpersonal in nature. Again, why truly the only way to keep these individuals from annihilating your soul, your life, and your sanity is to annihilate the relationships, cut ties, and all contact with them because they will not stop until you do. And no one deserves what these demonic lunatics bestow. No one. You deserve and worth so much more. Fight for you. Save you. Focus on you. Fuck the narcissist.